Hi friends, it's Carolyn Zuck here with Zuck Stitch and today is Saturday, August 29th, 2020. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. I'm really glad that you're here and spending part of your weekend or whenever you're watching this with me. Uh, so let's get right into it. It was a pretty productive week. I feel like I have a few things to share with you. First off, I want to share <laughs> um, Holly. Holly had emailed me over the summer uh, an email and said, because she's working on Farewell to Anger and I had talked about a couple months ago now, I think I had talked about how I was having, I messed up somewhere and I was having troubles and I needed to figure out, am I going to try to figure out where I messed up or just kind of <laughs> start over because it's really hard. You know, I, this is my first one over one piece. It's on 25 count, so it's not terrible. Um, but it's my first full coverage. It's my first one over one um, piece. And it's just hard for me to kind of designate the holes, especially when you're trying to count backwards, and figure out where you messed up. And the section that I'm in is very dark. So it's all a bunch of really dark colored threads. So Holly sent me this wonderful email saying, OK, I'm going to send you a picture of, of my farewell to anger and this is why you shouldn't give up on it. <laughs> and so she sent me this beautiful picture and I, I meant to share it with you then. And I just, with putting the house on the market and everything that happened, um, I completely forgot. So Polly, I apologize. Well, she sent me an updated email saying, I forgot to, to send you the update. I finished Farewell to Anger. And Holly's not on Facebook, so she doesn't, you know, obviously share it in our groups or anything. But I wanted to make sure that I showed you Holly's finished Farewell to Anger, um, she says she finished it June 30th. So I'm going to insert the picture here now. Isn't that gorgeous? That amount of work. She didn't tell me how long it took her or... I, Maybe you did in the first email. I can't quite remember, but um, it's gorgeous. Congratulations, Holly. That's such a great feat. And yes, it is inspiring me um, to not give up. And I was never going to give up totally on Farewell to Anger. It's just a matter of what am I going to do? And I need we need a little bit of a break, Farewell to Anger and I. Um, I think I have already started, because I'm a planner, as you guys know, I have already started figuring out what my goals are for next year. I know there's a lot, but these are goals for all these large projects that I have going in. Farewell to Anger is on here for, so it's really between now and the end of next year. So whatever I can get done between now and the end of 2020 and then going off into 2021. So for Farewell to Anger, I said that my goal was to figure out my mess up, figure out what I'm going to do, and then also stitch an additional 4,000 stitches, which I realize is not much. I know it's only about half a page, um, but that's kind of the pace I'm at. Half a page per year for how many years? I didn't do that math, but um, I, I, I'll pick it up again, you know, just ebbs and flows, and it might be more than that, but that's kind of the, my minimum goal to have. So I just need to figure out if I'm going to mess around with trying to back out the stitching because it's not as simple as row by row. You would think, well, like, we'll just do it row by row. But with full coverage, I kind of carried a bit, um, you know, and there's a lot of confetti. So it's harder to take the stitches out. And, you know, I mean, I think I looked and I have about 35, 36 hours put into it already, which sounds like a lot. But I think for a hate, it's not that much. Um, so I don't know. Part of me wants to just kind of restart, not worry about the mess up, just take it out and just restart it. Um, that's kind of where I'm going, but I just have to get there. So I, I'm not in the mood to deal with it right now. So we're still on a break. Uh, but that's my plan. So Holly, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful work with us and Congratulations on finishing that piece. It's just stunning and the amount of work and 
dedication that it takes to do a hate, any hate, is just astronomical. And then I wanted to talk about a comment. Now I'm not through all the comments, par for the course. Um, but Jesse sent me a lovely comment or on last week's Fostu, as so many of you did. But I wanted to point out, so Jesse said, and I printed it out so that I would read her words exactly. Um, I had talked about Stitch from Stash and how I'm just not doing it. I had thought I would recommit to doing it uh, in July for the second half of the year, and I just don't want to. It's not a goal of mine. It's never been a goal of mine. The reason why I even thought about trying to do it is because it's attached to Melanie Watkins' uh, Soulful Stitching on Facebook, her Year of Whips. And I wanted to do Year of Whips, uh, but part of that, I mean, you can still do Year of Whips. You can, it's, you can make it how you want to. Um, but she does give away um, a prize at the end of the year if you meet all your goals, which I think is a really great incentive. Um, but part of your whips is you have to complete at least half of the whips that you um, that you kind of point uh, or not point, but that you identify. Um, so you identify. I think she she originally said forty for this year because it's 2020, so 20 plus 20. And then I think people kind of talked her, beat her down a little bit, and so she reduced it to 20, but of course I already pinpointed 40, um, which means I would have to finish 20. And I think I'm at maybe 12? I'll have to look, I'll have to look. Each of the Harbor Haven that I'm doing, each of those scenes count as one, and I think I started at five this year, so that I'm kind of doing it that way. So the way I determine it is if if the piece could, if the section could stand alone on its own, as its own small or whatever, um, then I count that as a chart, if that makes sense. And Harbor Haven is 12 charts that you buy separately or you can buy it as a bundle, but there are 12 separate charts. Anyway. Um, I was talking about Stitch from Stash and how I just don't want to do it, and it's not a goal of mine. So Jessie said, just, she just kind of, it was so insightful. She says, I want to comment on Stitch from Stash. At least for some people, it is hard to give up one more thing. The pandemic has taken away, has taken away from us many of our favorite activities and people. I think we're all feeling like we've already given up so much just to keep ourselves and each other safe that it feels a bit unfair to have to give up one more thing. And Jesse, thank you for those words. I think that's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, that's exactly what it is. And, you know, thank you. And that's very true. I find it very true. And, um, yeah, it's hard. It's been a hard year for, for many, many people. So thank you, Jesse, for your very insightful words. I appreciate that. Um, I finished week two at my new job. It's still going well, I think. Uh, I really like it a lot. You know, working on Fridays, granted I've only done it twice, but is not so bad. Um, I think because I'm working so much fewer hours each day, kind of during the week, it's it's such a different pace. It's And part of it, I'm sure, is because I'm new. Our students haven't started yet. Our students won't start until Monday. I know it will get busier for sure. But just kind of the overall pace of things is just, it's hard to get used to because I came from, I mean, literally at my last job, I would sit down and work as fast as I could for 10 hours a day. And that was just the pace of it. Um, and it, it's nobody's fault. It's just the nature of, of that particular job and, you know, medical education. Um, this just feels, you know, taking, it's taking some getting used to in terms of just like I'm slowly feeling like this weight lifted off of me and like I can kind of breathe again. And, and not that I, I mean, I liked my last job as well. So it's not that it's just the pace is completely different. So things are still going well. Um, quick house update, no offers. <laughs> so many of you have sent such encouraging words and I really, really appreciate it. And I know the housing market is supposed to be really hot everywhere. My house is on a very busy street. Uh, which is the thing we keep hearing from feedback from people who have looked at it is that they don't like the busy street and my house is really in an area My particular house doesn't have a garage which for some people they need a garage um, Portland has changed a lot. 
uh, over the years. And I haven't, as many of you know, I haven't owned a car in 20 years because I don't need one living in Portland. I don't need a car. I'm literally a block away from our um, kind of public transit and the train took me straight to the doors. It's a block away from my house. It took me straight to the doors of my previous job. Half an hour and I was at work with no transfers. I mean, that's kind of unheard of. And so it's a really great area for that, but you don't really need a car to live here. But if you come with a car, you probably want a garage. So those are kind of the barriers that we're running into, um, probably among other things. But people are still coming to look at it, which is great, and that's encouraging. So we'll just, we'll just see what goes on. Okay, let's get into cross-stitching now, shall we? So I had to finish. Um, spring at Hawk Run Hollow. If you're on their Facebook group, you probably saw this, but this is one of the pieces that I'm working on. And I was working on block two up here with the sheep. Okay. And I finished it. So I'm going to show you the whole thing because I took it out of the Q snaps and then I'll, I'll close up to the when I finished. So this is on 32 count um, vanilla latte by Be Stitch Me. Can't see if you can see that. There we go. And that's what we have. It's a little off. It's like one stitch off somewhere. But I'm not gonna point it out because it works. Since the rain is over and gone. So so far we have behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. And just as a reminder, there is a a box here where you're supposed to write or not write, but um, stitch hawk run hollow. The very top there I I'm going to I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna put in there I think I'm going to put my name or my initials in the year I complete it which should be next year um, so I'm leaving that blank for now so that will be filled in so if the spacing looks a little strange that's why so I got that done so you know I track my time on these pieces and this first block took me 46 hours to do there was so much border and it was just around and around and around. And I love the effect this brick has, but it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot of color changes, uh, a lot of starting and stopping. It took me, and I did have to frog a little bit. I think three hours of that was frogging because I messed up on the border, the bottom border. So I frogged it out, but that took 46 hours. This one, only took me, what did I say, 28, 29 hours. So definitely faster, definitely faster. So I am loving this. I love, I love it, you know, when you take it off the Q snaps and you get to see kind of how it works together. I really, really love it. I'm just using the DMC conversion, not that it calls for MPI silks. I'm just using the DM, DMC conversion. So block two is done. Now, I am a block behind from where I wanted to be. Um, so, <clears throat> block two was going to be finished in July, but it's finished now. I have to cough just a second. Okay, I'm back. I just had something in my throat. All right. So, I did start last night. I did start Harbor Haven uh, number 11. We're on scene 11. So this is what it looks like. It's a terrible, my printer, this is when I had a color printer and the ink was running out and now I just have a black and white printer. So this is what it will look like. And this is scene 11 out of 12. And I just got a little tiny start. Um, so just down here, just got started on down here. This is stitched on a 32 count Belfast linen and vintage smoky white. And the only problem, so, I mean, I think I'm going to, can you see how thick that is rolled up back there? I think I'm going to put it back on an 11 by 17 Q-snap just to help it. But my only issue, and if you know, so down here, so this and this, it's on the same row. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's off. It is on the same row. But the, the, the linen is a bit warped there, so it kind of 
goes up. And I don't know, you know, even when I loosen the Q-snap, it's a little bit better, but it is still warped a little bit. And I don't know if that will work itself out when I iron it or if anybody has any tips on that. I don't know if that makes sense. So the, the um, threads kind of warp upward. I don't know if warp is the right word. It, it, it's fine. It's not broken or anything, but it's just kind of stretched out of, of place a bit. Right in that one spot. And I don't know why. Um, and so I don't know what to do about that. Anyway, so that's my little start on Harbor Haven number 11. I'm really excited, you know, when you get close to the end of a project and you're really motivated to work on it. Um, so I'm really, really excited about that. So that was my new start last night because I was working on spring at Hawk Run Hollow um, most of the week. I did get caught up on my temperature tree. This is by Stitching Mommy, where each branch represents a month and each leaf represents, I'm doing the high temperatures for Portland. Okay, and we are, August I think is this one, so we are kind of rounding over on the side. And we have cooled down quite a bit this um, this past week. Um, we had, so you can see these deep reds are 90s, even 100. We have a couple hundreds on there. Um, but for the most part, we've really cooled down. Now it's supposed to be up to 90 again, I think, this week, but just at 90. I've definitely felt the shift where the mornings, even when it's warm in the afternoons, the mornings are so much cooler, uh, which helps it not feel as hot <laughs> in the afternoon. So there we go. This is a really fun stitch. I work on this on Sundays, and it takes me maybe half an hour to do to get caught up on the week. And then the first Sunday of the month, I will spend more time um, stitching the branch for that month. So when so next week. I will stitch the September branch down here. So that's where we're at. And that's a really fun stitch. So that's, hopefully I can show the chart. Don't walk if I did. Um, <laughs> so that's my stitching from this week. Like I said, most of my time was spent getting um, Spring at Hawk Run Hollow done. So haul. So I have a little bit of haul. I have a lot more haul coming. A little bit of haul. So first up, this came, and this I am, this is cross stitch and needlework. This is April 1998. I bought it off of eBay. This we're going to blame Kim Gatz for. Um, Kim and her daughter Sarah have a floss tube called Stitch and Stuff. And Sarah has three daughters who also show their craft work on it as well. So I will link them down below. You should check them out. They're really, really fun to watch. Um, and Kim showed this in their last, and I think it was just last week's floss tube and I ran over to eBay, did not get into a bidding war this time um, on eBay. It was like $3 and $3 shipping or something like that. And the reason why I bought it is because of this. This is a Nora Corbett little Easter. Is it Easter? I don't even know. I just saw it and said, yep, I want to stitch that with her. Gathering eggs. Okay, it is Easter. Um, so they had this whole spread, and I haven't really read it closely. I've just kind of glanced through it. They had this whole spread on Nora Corbett. And what I noticed was she's talking about her children, three-year-old Ian and one-year-old Jack. Well, this is in 1998, so those kids are now in their mid-20s almost. It's just kind of funny. So they talk about Nora Corbett, um, but this, and I haven't really looked through the whole rest of the magazine, but this is what I'm going to stitch. I don't know when we're going to stitch it, but again, you know, we're doing this magazine challenge that my friend Robin from Bird's Eye um, stitches and I, and I'll link her down below as well. Uh, it's called um, Magazine Monthly Challenge. We have a Facebook group. But if you're not on Facebook, I will also be announcing the themes and the acrostics on this channel after the first of the month. So we're starting September 1st, which is Tuesday, I think, is when we start. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. 
But anyway, so I got this off of eBay, super fast shipping. It's in great condition, this whole magazine. And I think she's precious. So, I don't know when we're going to stitch. We got Sarah, too. Sarah said that she, we pre-pressured her into stitching it. So maybe this would be a good, um, I don't know, spring time stitch for next year out of our magazines. So we will see. But I got that. And again, that's the April 1998 edition of Cross Stitch and Needlework. And there were several on eBay when I saw it. So if you do want to go pick it up, then check that out. Then I got this piece of fabric in the mail. This is called... It's an even weave, 28 count even weave. It's called Evening Sunset. Can you see that? How it goes from the blues into the oranges and reds. Isn't that pretty? So I got this for another magazine start. This is from June 2020, The World of Cross Stitching. And you might remember me kind of freaking out about this. It's called, it's designed by Fiona Baker. It's called Pretty Promenade. Although in my mind, I kept calling it Summer Pier. So I don't know. It's this piece. And it's stitched on this fabric. So you can kind of see the blue and how it transitions to the um, light orange. And then the rest, of course, is covered by the stitching. But because it's a sea, right, you just imagine the horizon and the sun setting. I fell in love with this piece and I think it's partly the lanterns and there's beads along here. So I've been kidding it up uh, this summer. I probably won't start it. So because Robin and I started this magazine challenge group, this is not slated to start until next June, but now I have everything that I need. Um, so I have the beads, I have the floss and now I have the fabric. Uh, and in this you learn how to stitch petite point. So petite point are tiny stitches worked over one strand of the fabric. Best suited for even weave and linen as it's difficult to pierce Ada. Um, they're great for stitching small details such as the curves on the lamp post and on the head of the lamp. So you can see where there's going to be more curves. So I will learn that. I will see what that is about, but so you can see that scroll work there. So we'll see. We will see. So, but let me tell you about the journey of this fabric. This fabric. So I got it from Sew It All, S-E-W It All, in the UK. I ordered this fabric on June 27th. It shipped, I got the shipping notice on June 29th, which is a Monday. Uh, so super fast shipping. It got to the Chicago Distribution Center on July 3rd. So great. It was delivered to me last night. <laughs> I had almost, I think like two weeks ago, I had almost said maybe it was delivered and it got stolen because packages do get stolen off my front porch. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe it got stolen. Maybe I have to rebuy it. It wasn't expensive, so the shipping did cost as much as this fabric. Um, so that was my dilemma. Do I really? But it's so perfect. There's no substitution for that. So, um, but then I started tracking it, and it just sat in Chicago for six weeks. And then all of a sudden, on August 24th, it started moving, and it was delivered last night. So it's not so at, all, so at all. It's not their fault. It's just, you know, everything with the USPS and whatnot. So... Uh, they shipped it out, you know, I ordered it on like a Saturday night, and of course Sunday I don't think they worked. So, I got that. I'm really excited. So I have everything I need now, I think, for that project, so it's ready to go next June. Okay, and my new fabric for Narnia came in. So, as a reminder, if you missed last week, I am stitching Jan Hicks Narnia. I love this pattern so much. Um, I am stitching it in Victorian Motto Sampler Threads. So these are my choice of colors. Ecru and Coal. Whoops. And I think they're really pretty together. And I started stitching on, this is a 36 count flax linen. 
There's several mess ups in here. I love how it looks together, but I can't stand this linen for some reason. It's very slubby. It's very, I don't know. I don't like the fabric. So I ordered new and it's not going to work when I ordered essentially, unless I change my colors, which is possible. So this is, it's too light. It's a 32 count platinum Lugana and it's beautiful, but it's not going to work with these colors, with the white especially. So I either keep looking for a new fabric or, you know, a bit darker fabric, or I think about changing the colors. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, somebody said on Etsy that they found a fabric that might work, and I can't remember what that fabric was. And I can't remember where their comment was because there's so many groups now. Um, but anyway, it's a beautiful fabric. It'll be put to good use for something. Uh, so I don't feel like... Oh, I have ink on my... Make sure I don't get down the fabric. Any other left-handers in the room that get ink on their hand when they write because you're dragging your hand across <laughs> your freshly written um, words. I have to tell you, I was in college before I realized that that was a left-hander thing and that it didn't happen to everybody where you come out of class and your hand is just covered in ink. Anyway, that's a fabric. It's pretty fabric. I'll use it for something. Probably not Nar uh, Narnia. Um, I don't know. I'm just really tied to this and I have so much of it now because I ordered enough for all of Narnia. So I have to figure that out. Um, Narnia was my one of my whip go draws. Well, it's actually two of my whip go draws for July. I decided I am going to count what I've already worked on for July towards whip go, even though I'm abandoning this fabric. Um, so that means I have like two and a half hours or something like that left to stitch this month to complete one block of Narnia, which I was going to do with the new fabric. And then I would have at least one block done, but now I don't want to use that fabric. I don't think unless I figure something else out in the meantime. Does that make sense? Um, so I'm going to figure that out. We'll see. It's going to have a different feel, right? What I liked about the, the version I started was it felt very, elegant and whatnot, um, but it will just have a different feel to it, which is fine too. So that's my haul. Um, I do have more haul coming. I ordered some stuff from Garon Stitchery. I ordered stuff from my local LNS. Um, I think I'm still waiting on an order from 123 Stitch. So, okay, let's do giveaways now. So, a few weeks ago, I gave this away, and I never heard from Anne Masu. I'm so sorry. I didn't hear from you, um, so I had to re redraw. So, Anne, I hope you're doing well, um, but I did redraw, and I just went back to the same video, and anybody who commented that they want the word was blessings. This is by Bent Creek, and it's called Blessings Abound, and I love, I love this name. Linda's 144 Hobbies. <laughs> so, Linda, you won, and I do need your address. So if you want to send me your address, I'll get the sent out to you, Linda. And then from last week's, we had this Halloween sampler, and it's a kit. It comes with Ada and some floss. I don't know if it's all there or what, but the keyword was Halloween and time to stitch. Sue T, you won this, and I need your address. Oh, and Linda as well, um, you can email me at czookstitch at gmail.com. It's always in the comment box um, in case you um, need to see it or just want to copy and paste it. I email your, me your address and I'll get that sent out. We have this heart and hand chart called Blessings Abound, which I think is beautiful, just in time for Thanksgiving. Peggy Wilkinson, you won this. So Peggy, please send me your address. And then we had What Makes It Autumn, also a heart and hand. And we have a bunch of autumn kind of little scenes and words. And Hannah O. Hannah, you won this, and I need your address as well. Get that sent out to you. All right, for this week, I am on a Halloween kick um, because it's almost time to start your Halloween stitching. So I think in the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing some Halloween charts. The first up 
is Country Spirits Collections collection. It's called Witches Teaching Stitching. That's what it looks like. And there's a DMC conversion. It's 83 wide by 37 high. And if you want to be entered to win this, say something about witches, plural, W-I-T-C-H-E-S. And I'll ship anywhere in the world, so no worries about that. Make sure you don't say giveaway or thanks for the giveaway or something like that um, in the comments so we won't attract trolls. So, witches. This next one is from the Cricut Collection. It's called Trick or Treat. And you'll get, can you see, I'm trying to hold it as close as I can so you can see that cute Trick or Treat sign up there. And then you have these three bears that are dressed in their Halloween costumes. Very, very cute. And if you want to win this, say Halloween. I know we used that word last week, but we'll say Halloween. <laughs> and then this one, this one cracks me up. It's called Halloween Party. It says, you are invited. Old Salem, Massachusetts, October 31, 1692. Where your favorite pointy hat? Isn't that cute? So if you want to win this, um, say, party. Isn't this cute? And they have others of these. I really like this one. I think that's really cute. The Boo Crew. I don't know if you can still, I don't know. There's a copyright. 2011 by Sue Hillis. So I don't know if they're still around or not, but this is a Sue Hillis Designs. I think it's very cute. So party for this one. Okay. So I'm going to clear off my desk here and get and talk about September plans and then this coming week's plans. So I will be right back. All right. I am back. And while I was clearing off my desk, I heard the mailman drop some mail. And so I ran down to grab it. I'm out of breath because I just ran up the stairs. And I got my <clears throat> World of Cross Stitching. This is September 2020 issue. So I'm very excited to look through that. I'll be doing a flip through. And I also owe you a flip through of an issue of Just Cross Stitch. I think it's the October issue. Not the Halloween issue. I did that one already, but the October issue. So be looking for a couple of flip throughs later um, this week. And they always send a free kit, which and this is a Furry Tales kit, which I'm going to give away right now. Because why not? Isn't that cute? Look at the colors in that. I think it's such a cute little mouse. And you get, it's to make a card. And it kind of ripped here, but everything's in there. So it's 14 count Ada, I'm pretty sure, and the floss. And you get the card base as well. So let's give this away. This says summer is here. So let's say summer if you want a chance to, to win this. And again, I'll ship it anywhere in the world. So summer. There you go. Bonus giveaway. Um, okay, so plans for September. September, I'm going to finish Harbor Haven number 11, which I just have that little bit, little bitty start on. So Harbor Haven number 11. We're going to do, we, <laughs> you and I, are going to do a four-hour rotation on Holly Angel. And I'll show this to you. This is a Lisa Leanne Designs. It's from Just Cross Stitch Christmas Ornament 2018 edition. This is what I'm trying to finish for a uh, Christmas gift this year. So I do want to get it done this year. Okay. This is stitched on a 14 count Ada in light blue. And this is where it's at. So I did four hours. I'm going to do at least four hours in September. So this is where four hours got me last month. Well, I had done an hour previously. So this is, this is this is a jolly July start. So I probably did about an hour in July, which was most of this topiary tree. And so the four hours I did in August was the rest of this tree and everything on the angel you see here. So if I want to get it done, because I have another one that I do want to get done as well before Christmas. So it might get more hours, but this is a fun stitch. Um, on 14 count, uh, which is nice and easy to see the holes and it's on a light color. 
So that will get at least four hours. Sometime in September, I haven't quite figured out when. And then, oh, I forgot to pull it. I'm going to be working, I mean, my goal is to do Spring at Hawk Run Hollow Block 4. Let's see if I can find it for you. It's way on the bottom of the pile. Oh, I'm sorry, Block 3. Block 3, which is this one here, where it says the flowers appear on Earth. This one, now I might be eating my words later, it it doesn't seem to have as much stitching as, like, this sheep took me forever. It's cute, but there's a lot of stitching on. This one, yes, the, the tulips there seem to have a lot of stitching, but it's a lot of kind of block color. So we'll see. I'm hoping this one won't take me 40 hours to do. But I do would like, I do would like, I do would like to get block three done in September. That's the plan, anyway. Whipco. So the Whipco numbers were drawn. So I do two a month and my goal for this year is 10 hours on each piece that is drawn. And like I said earlier, I think next year I'm going to up it to 15 hours a month. I don't know how, but I have a lot of projects and a lot of goals. So the first one that was drawn is Spring Quakers by Rosewood Manor which I have just the tiniest, tiniest start on. And this is, I've decided just this week that this is a goal. Since I'm going to finish, my goal is to finish Spring of Hawker and Hollow next year, hopefully by May. I want to finish this by next year as well. So that's a goal. I don't have a timeline for that or how I'm going to do that. <laughs> but I would like to finish this next year as well because I'm, I'm doing all four of these and we got to get these done so I can do more. Okay, so this is where I'm at. Is this right? Yeah. So the tiniest are, I don't even have the first, I don't even have the first um, motif done. This is on whatever the called for is. I didn't write it down. I want to say Valor, but I don't think that's right. But it's a linen, and it's just so pretty. And I got the matching needle minder. Yeah, I don't know what the fabric is, but I got it as a kit from Crazy Annie's. So I did get the matching needle, needle minder, the Valdani. This is the Valdani threads. Aren't those beautiful? And they're easy to work with. I talked about how you work with them um, in a video previously, but there's three strands and you just use all three strands. So I am going to give this 10 hours this month, and I'm very excited to pull this back out. And this is the Garon bag that Ronnie designed for the Spring Quaker. So they were doing a stitch along, and I'm about a year behind. The other Whipgo, uh, this is another, this is my kitty cat bag. The other Whipgo call was Hoity Toity which I'm super excited about. I started this, I think, in October last year and haven't really worked on it since. So this is a long dog, hoity-toity, and I started up here in the left-hand corner. I am using Jan Hicks Color Conversion for this. So uh, on madforyarn.com, I'll try to remember to link it below, she gives all her color conversions, so check that out. So this is where I'm at. And Ronnie... Can you come search my edges for me, please? Um, so I love her color conversion. I love fall colors too, which this one is very fall. But my gosh, this just makes my heart sing <laughs> with the pinks and the blues. So I am going to work on this, give it 10 hours. My goal by the end of 2021 is to kind of get, I said pages one through three, which is essentially mostly this top top third piece right here, which is a lot, frankly. So I'm excited to pull her back out because it's been nearly a year since I've worked on her. So that's Whipco. Those are the two Whipco projects. Now the magazine challenge. The magazine challenge, so the way it works, so we're all starting September 1st, 
the way it works is Robin and I give you a theme for each month that you try to match, um, try to stitch, you know, you can be as creative as you want, make it work for you. Um, but you stitch that theme out of any one of your numerous magazines you have sitting on your shelf. The theme for September is autumn or fall. Okay. So, and, and you set your own goal for how much you stitch or however you want to do that. So my theme, my theme piece is Elegant Pumpkins by Marie Barber. And it looks like this. And it's in Just Cross Stitch, September 2011. Uh, EJ on Sunshine Stitchers showed this. And I this is the one I ran to eBay and got everybody more of something to stitch. But I think it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I'm waiting on the fabric to come in. Um, I was I kind of hesitated because I wasn't sure what fabric. And I ended up just going for the called for. It's a like a green willow, I think it's called. Um... Willow Green Cashel Linen, uh, 28 count. And there's a lot of Krynic. I am waiting for some Krynics to come, but that comes after, you know, all the regular stitching. So my goal for this piece, so you have your theme project. So my goal for the theme, this is my theme piece, is two hours of stitching. Easy. But we're also doing an acrostic each month. And so we have released all the monthly themes for the year ahead so that you can plan. But we're going to be releasing the cross stitch kind of the month before. Does that make sense? So in August when we announced this whole challenge, um, we announced the September acrostic is leaves, L-E-A-V-E-S. And again, do what works for you. Make it fit however you want. If you want the acrostic pieces to come out of magazines, that's a great challenge. If not, you don't have to. I'll explain that in a little, in a minute. I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, and then on September 1, or maybe a couple of days after, Robin, we need to talk about this, um, we'll release the acrostic for October so that you can start planning um, for October. Now, one of the benefits that I have is because Robin and I, we know what the acrostics are ahead of time. Um, so I've already planned October, but I can't tell you that part. So... Elegant Pumpkins will be my theme piece for September, two hours. For the acrostic leaves, I'm also using this for the two E's, E for elegant, for both of them. So I'm going to give it two more hours for each E. So it's a total of six hours in September for Elegant Pumpkins. Okay. And I'd like to start this on the 1st of September and just give it about two hours, because that's about how much I can do in the evening of stitching. Sometimes I can get two and a half or three, but at least minimum six hours. What, September 1st starts on Tuesday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I don't know how I'm going to work this into kind of my regular rotation, but I really love it, as long as the fabric comes in. So that's, so this is, again, this is the Halloween issue from Just Cross Stitch uh, 2011. September 2011, and there are a few other pieces in here that I'm going to need to be stitching as well, but we'll talk about that next month. So that's that piece. Then I had already planned to start this in September. These next two that I'm going to do for the acrostic are not magazine pieces because I already planned to, to stitch them and they will fit. So this is Lindy Stitches Beautiful Things. I love this. And we had planned to start this in fall because they're very fall colors. And it says, oh, my darling, it's true. Beautiful things have dents and scratches too. And I just love that sentiment. So I'm going to start that. I'm going to stitch it on. This is a Bestitch Me Outback Jack Lugana. I think it's perfect. And I think I have all the threads and everything ready to go. So this is going to be L in leaves for Lindy Stitches, who is the designer. So I'm going to give two hours for L, and then I'm going to give it another two hours for the S in leaves for Stitches, Lindy Stitches. Okay. So four hours total on this piece in September, even though it's not a magazine piece. I made it work for me because I also want to be careful with not starting 
too, too many things. Famous last words. And then the last star is Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Manor. Now, Gary has been running a um, sit along. They started this last year in September, and I was putting it off. I was like, no, I don't need those. I don't need those. And then I think it was when I saw the winter one that I said, I need all four of those. So this is what it will look like. I have not started it yet. Again, I got kind of the bundle kit. I don't know if Crazy Annie is still offering these. She gave about a 20% discount if you bought the chart, the floss, the fabric from her. It's going to be stitched on 28 count du doubloon, doubloon, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, and I haven't started. And these are the Valdani threads. Very, very fall. Look at that rich purple in there. So this one, again, I'm going to use it for my acrostic, even though it's not, it's not, um, magazine. That's fine. I made it work for me. It's going to be the A in leaves for autumn Quakers. And I'm going to give it two hours for the A. And then it's going to be the V in, in leaves for the Valdani threads. And I'll give it two hours for that. So four hours total. Okay, so that's the acrostic for next month. Oh, I did also get the needle minder that matches or coordinates. So that is my plan for all of September. Now, I think, I think that's everything. Yes. So what am I going to work on this coming week? So I'm going to do my temperature tree tomorrow, which is Sunday. That's what I do on Sundays. I'm going to work on Harbor Haven. I am going to, I said I was going to do two and a half hours on Narnia to complete that block, or I'm sorry, box on my uh, whip go board. If I can figure out what I want to do, maybe I will use that fabric and change the floss colors. Then I will go ahead and do that. If I'm really tied to these floss colors and want to try a different fabric, I probably won't be able to get that. But it's only two and a half hours and then another 10 hours that I have to fit in. And I'll, I'll just give myself to the end of the year to figure that out. So that should be doable. So I'll figure something out with Narnia. May or may not work on that. But Har Harbor Haven number 11, focus on that. Get that done. Temperature tree. And then Elegant Pumpkins, as long as my fabric comes in, I plan to work on that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or so for this week. But, yeah, I think that is everything. I think this is a really long video. I don't know because I've stopped and started a couple of times so I don't know how long once I get all the pieces put together but look for a couple of flip throughs coming later this week I'll probably be in the same outfit uh, but otherwise thank you so much for spending part of your day or evening with me I hope you're all doing really well I know that there's been storms and flooding and all that I mean it's just I I'm excited for fall coming because I love fall and winter, but can we just be done with 2020? <laughs> we just need a normal year. I don't care. If 2021 is the most boring year on earth, I don't care. Hang in there, and I will see you next week. Bye, Wait, everyone. Don't go. Come back. Come back. Um. So right after I finished that video, I came downstairs, and my mail carrier had put a couple packages out back. So I got Hall to show you. So I wanted to just tack it on to the end of this video instead of waiting until next week because it's here. Okay, so first up, I'm going to show you what I got from 123 Stitch. The fabric for Elegant Pumpkins came in. So this is the Willow Green, but it's a Belfast linen, I guess. So that'll be pretty. So that came. So I can start on that on September 1. So that's great. This is some beautiful Krynik. It's a fuchsia, which is also for elegant pumpkins. I love that. I am waiting on a couple more Krynics to come from somewhere. I can't remember where. And then this next thing that I ordered is completely enabled by uh, Robin, Bird's Eye Stitches. She is doing these. I got all four. Winter cheer, they are Milho kits. Winter cheer. And my plan for these 
is I'm gonna stitch them all on one piece of fabric at like two by two. I think they're so pretty. I just love, love the colors, the blues and the greens. And I think they will be so cute and so sweet, kind of, I'm gonna be able to do this in my, but you get the idea. Kind of like that on all four. I don't know when I'm gonna start these, but I do have them. So that was my one, two, three stitch order. And then I had, I had forgotten about some birthday money that I had from back in March that my parents gave me very generously. And they said to use it for StitchCon unless StitchCon got canceled and then to go to Acorns and Threads. So, and then I spent a little bit more than the birthday money because that's what you do. So I stocked up on charts. I am missing. Hold on, I'm missing it because I was sitting on it. Okay, so I got a bunch of floss. I can't remember what it's all for. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I have it written down, so I've started having to write down what I need floss for. It's for stuff coming up. It's it's just DMC, some specialty overdyed. I got another thing of Krynek. That's probably for elegant pumpkins. Oh, I won't put it over there. And then I did get this little pumpkin button which is for something I'm going to be starting in October for the magazine challenge, but I'm not gonna show you that yet. So it's just floss. So I got that from Acorns, which is my local needle workshop, and I always have their phone number and website down below. They are fantastic. You can't, you can, there's an order form online, but they don't have like online shopping, but anything you need they can get for you, and they're wonderful and super helpful. So then I stocked up on a bunch of charts I've been wanting for a while. So I got three lavender and lace charts. No, I don't know when I'm going to start these, but I got, what is she called? I don't have the name on it. Winter Rose. So Sarah, Stitching Mommy, I've seen her stitch this, and it's so beautiful. I love it. And I think it's not that big. 103 by 139. So it's not terrible, but I just love it so much. So I got that. And this is another one that I've seen Stitching Mommy, I think. Nantucket Rose. I also love that. And then this is um, Mother's Tree, which I wanted to have in my stash. This is one of those. So if you haven't seen this before, I know is it Steph, uh, Pam from Pam and Steph has done it. Um, you go back and in, into your your family history and and you write down the women's names, which I thought was really nice. Um, and you can do this over and over again for different people. So it's called Mother's Tree. And then you know I like the huge pieces. <laughs> Did you know that about me? I, <laughs> oh, oh, I did get this one. Okay. Can't even remember what I got. I got a whole bunch of Kohler, Kohler Designs, Sandy Orton, Kohler Design Studios. I got The Night Before Christmas. There's a lot of stitching in these, a lot. But I just love how much detail there is. And look at that cat. So this is Night Before Christmas. This is Spring Sampler. Oh, here we go again, another seasonal. It says, when Irish eyes are smiling, sure tis like a moan in spring. Maybe that's what it says. Somebody can tell me. So there's hollyhock. I think it's just beautiful. I got summer. I think Jessie Marie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff is working on this one here. Look at those little children playing at the beach. It's a little bit different style. It reminds me of my childhood for some reason. I feel like there were a lot of things with this 
kind of feel, and maybe it was my mom or my grandmother's, I don't know, but I just really love, this is autumn. Look at that letter. Look how they did that. All stitching and they made it really look like paper. It's not going to be easy, is it? How big are these? 168 wide by 224 high. But I think there's a lot of color detail. Like a lot of, like, these aren't really blocks of color, right? Sorry about the lighting. I'm, I'm in my living room now, so. And then this one I think is probably one of my favorites. It's the winter sampler. Look at that skate, ice skate. And then the Santa. And then they had called me yesterday, Acorns. They're, we're still waiting on a few additional charts to come in that I had ordered. Uh, some Glendon Place. I think there's a couple Glendon Place. I can't remember what else. There's a few more things that were, oh, some fabric, but that's not for until October. So for the magazine challenge, but um, yeah. So that's the rest of my haul. So thanks for staying in there and, and watching this last little bit. I hope you have a great week. Bye.